How's it? How's it? How are you doing today? Right. So there is one rule in photography that you absolutely cannot break if you want your photograph to be successful. I'm sure at some point, you know, you've had one of your pictures maybe on a, a display or a gallery or a, you know, photo club exhibition or just online. And you've kind of wondered why, you know, people will come along and they'll look at your picture and then almost immediately kind of, you know, poodle off to the next image, right? They're not spending any time with yours. And this is because you are breaking a cardinal rule in your photography is that you are giving people an excuse to move on to the next picture. Now, I don't mean because, oh, the picture itself is rubbish or they don't care for the subject or these sort of things. You know, obviously they play a role in these things, but I'm talking about something more fundamental in your image. And that is the, the composition that is sabotaging your efforts. Now in composition, you know, we're bombarded with rules, ideas, oh, these things, you must do this, you must do that, blah, 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 blah. And you know, they have been built up over time, you know, long before photography was around, they were doing, you know, these sort of things within painting. And we often become hamstrung with these so-called rules that we think that so long as something conforms to a rule, then that's okay, that that's all that is needed. And I, I think this is a great big problem in photography. And I want you to stop thinking about composition in terms of rules and more as, as guidelines. As I said, the only rule that we need to obey within photography is to keep the viewer looking at your photograph for as long as is possible. And that's where you use the, 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 the ideas and the suggestions in composition to your advantage rather than sabotaging your images. So how are we gonna keep the person looking at your photograph, you know, for as long as possible so they can really get, get involved with it and, and start to love your picture? But the simple thing is, of course, not to give them an excuse to, to look away. There is, I've, I'm sure that maybe I'm sort of sucking something out of my thumb here, but I seem to recall at some point, listening about this idea of, of circular composition, that the eye is led from one thing to the another, to the another, to the another, and, and to the, back to the start. So that the eye is constantly contained within the frame. That you put together a composition that doesn't give the viewer an, a, a reason to disappear. Leading lines, we are, I mean, we, most of us are familiar with leading lines, you know, one of those rules of composition. And they're extremely strong, but instead of leading the eye through the picture to something in, you know, there in the distance, give it a little bit of depth. So apart from those naughty leading lines taking us onto the next photograph, what are the things in your image that could be tempting the wandering eye to sort of start to stray away from the heart of your photograph. One of the, the, the big suspects in all of this is, is light, is your bright areas within the image, specular highlights, you know, bits of brightness, just this there on the edge of the frame that uh, the eye wants to go and look, say, what is that thing over there, right? And, and as soon as they do that, then it kind of tends to stumble and fall off, off of the, off of the print. So what can you do to make sure that this, these, these highlights are not really sort of sabotaging your photography? And we can turn to our old friend, the vignette. Now I can see the, the gasp of breath, I can hear it, right? Oh, vignette, oh my God, they're horrible. Yes, right, vignettes can be used um, horrendously, right? I think it's a, it's a, it's a thing, right? but we want to have subtle use here. And I'm gonna stress the word subtle because everything that you're doing here needs to be subtle. If you start signposting things, you're making it too obvious. You're making it feel like you have constructed something fake and people aren't gonna engage with it in so much. And vignettes fall into this category 100%. So burn in the edge of your print, just subtly. 
Oh, just a little bit, just around the edges. It doesn't have to be a neat little border that's, you know, feathered 10 pixels and then taken down two thirds of a stop. Just a little bit, just roughly, you know, make it look natural. Don't, don't be mechanical about that process, right? Just a little bit around the edges. That's going to stop the eye wandering on. It's going to keep the eye on the page. I mean, I don't remember the last time anybody talked about that. As, you know, I've certainly never seen anybody talk about it on YouTube about this idea of just darkening down the edges. Right now, I'm going to throw you a curveball because, of course, we've been talking about single images. But what happens if you have a photo series, a wedding album, you know, a, a series of, of prints of, of portraits that work as a you know triptych or whatever think about cartoon strips you know the old supermans and you know the graphic novels of today and all that sort of stuff how those strips visually led you from one frame to another so you knew exactly where to look on this very busy page of little squares all of what we've talked up to this point now, just throw it out, right? Because what we actually don't want to do is encourage the viewer to look at the next picture. So take that circular motion, but then add an off ramp, right? Say, this is where I want you to look next. And then you put something outside there for them to look at to next, right? It's one of the quirks of photography, isn't it? That whatever you hear as a kind of, do you should do it this way, then there's something else to say, no, actually you should do it the other way. You need to understand when to employ these ideas, to give a little bit more thought, not just to the uh, you know, so-called rules of composition, but more to the way that they are going to influence how the viewer interacts with, digests, gets to grips with and responds to your photograph. Simply conforming to rules of composition is going to make those weeds come back and entangle the viewer. But of course that's what you actually want. What a rubbish <laughs> what a rubbish analogy. You don't want to you, we want to tangle the viewer. I don't know. Okay, let's let's call it right. The composition is going to be built up into a bit of, is, is an ice rink and, and the viewer just slips off to the next thing. So let's, let's call it that, right? It's the ice rink of composition, uh, whatever, right? But we want people to in there. And so you need to be mindful of how you're going to use these things, how you're going to employ them to affect rather than just going, well, it's a nice balanced composition. If you are interested in finding out more about these conventions of composition, and how you can use them to keep the viewer's eye within the frame, then check out this video here. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you today. Thank you ever so much, and I'll see you again soon.